tribal trails, tribal trails. The Son of God, He is near. He chose to walk with us. These tribal trails, tribal trails. Welcome to Tribal Trails. I'm so glad you joined us today, and we have an exciting guest. Her name is Corey Hill. Corey, thank you for being with us today and sharing what God has done in your life and his faithfulness to you. A little bit about my background is that I grew up traveling on a bus singing with my family. And I was very young. I was about six years old when our family started traveling to sing. And I thought it was a normal way of life until someone at school told me that that wasn't normal, <laughs> that people traveled with their family. Uh -huh. So that was a bit of a shock to me. But um, my dad is from the Seneca tribe and my mom is from the Mohawk and they always joke that it made all of us girls moccasins. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, oh, so okay. uh, that's a little bit about my growing up years uh, was touring across Canada and into the States with, with our family group traveling and singing. So, so uh, when was the first time that God worked in your life, Corey? I think that from a very young age, I actually was aware that, that I needed God and my parents were Christians. But I can remember um, when I was in grade one, it was a very profound time. I started to witness to friends at school and I was so excited about telling them about Jesus. And one of my friends, uh, finally she said, yes, I want to know Jesus. And so I wasn't sure how to go about this. So I took her to the girls' bathroom and we knelt <laughs> down beside the toilet and I led her to the Lord there. And I can remember coming home and talking to my mom and saying, I'm just so excited that I led this girl to the Lord. And then I started to cry. And I said, can I accept Jesus into my life too? And so definitely a missionary before my time. And uh, from that point forward, just uh, having that growth and getting to know God more and six years old is very young to grasp the whole concept of who God is. And so I think it's something that as you face things through life, it just, that grows in you over time and learning. Yeah. So you grew, grew up singing in the singing ministry with your family? Yes. 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 And uh, how did God work in your life during those years? I think when I look back to the traveling years with my family, I definitely would not change a thing. Um, people often thought, they would say, you girls are being forced to do this because we were so young. It never felt that way. It felt like something that we were born to do. And when I think of the scripture verse that God predestined you before you were born, um, how true that felt in our lives because that was something that we've just felt that we were supposed to be doing was singing. Mm -hmm. So definite calling from a young age. Yeah. yeah. So through the years, how is God faithful in your life? You know, I was thinking about that and often I enjoy just sitting by water and reflecting on the things that God has done. And in my personal life, the last six years have been a huge challenge uh, for many different reasons. But I was out singing and I was helping to set up sound equipment and I lifted something too heavy. And because of that, I ended up getting a hernia which was strangulating my bowels. And I have never in my life experienced that much pain. But because the show must go on, so to speak, we were at a singing event and I finished out my full day at this jamboree and I would do a set and then go back and I'd be in extreme agony. And at that time I said to someone, I said, I'm gonna end up in the hospital tonight. I'm just giving you advance warning. Mm -hmm. And I powered through the day and then, and then 
the doctor actually said, he says, you know, you were within an hour of losing your bowel completely, and it, it was so strangulated. And so now I realize how life-threatening that is. Yes. And he said, you should have been here hours ago. So how did God speak to you through that? Through that time, I just, I felt a peace, even though I was going through all of that. I felt the peace of knowing that God was present with me during that time and even through the pain. And I know that it wasn't a surprise to him. And so um, I felt a calm in that. Um, I didn't feel the anxiousness of that. And, and I think more so even than in those moments, it was after because I came through surgery and then I was still a very sick girl. And so I ended up having to have emergency surgery in April, June, and July of that year. And so it was consistently surgery after surgery. And with each surgery, it got uh, a little bit more critical and kind of, because when I came out of my first surgery, a huge hematoma formed in my stomach, um, which was life-threatening right off the bat. That's what made it so critical. And I think at that point, going through things that I, I would not wish on anybody to have to go through. Because of the pain? Or? Just the pain and the different procedures. And I eventually was hooked up to a vacuum pump machine, and which, um, but the interesting thing through all of it, there was different phases. I ended up being on the couch for about 120 days trying to heal. And there was at one point where it was very hard for me to stand because it was all to do with my tummy, but I held my stomach and I went to the window. I, I couldn't get down the stairs. At the time I was in an upstairs apartment. Went to the window and I just remember looking at the sky and saying, God, you're still there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're still there. This was after my third surgery. And it was a time of year when this shouldn't have happened, but all of a sudden, through the window came the strongest smell of blossoms. And it was like in that instant, I knew, God, you're still here. You're with me. And talk about taking words to our songs and putting them into reality. In my life, God was carrying me, and I had that smell of blossoms and the reassurance that God was there. My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And then partnered with that, coming along beside it, was people started to pray all across Canada. And I think even to this day, it kind of baffles the doctors why I'm still here. But... People were praying, and I could feel that change in my life when people started to pray. It was almost like this bubble came around me, and, and I just felt so much strength and so much peace. And it, it's a wrestle. If anyone has dealt with health things, they know that going through the surgery process is not easy, but going through it three times in three months, and then coming out the other side and still knowing that you're in just as critical of a state as you were when you first went in. Um, mm. Normally you have surgery, it fixes it, and then you start to heal. So I was laying there one day, and I can remember being on this couch because I was there for so many days and I was praying. It's almost like God said, Corey, are you going to choose joy through this moment or are you going to choose sorrow? And I wrestled with that, and I was, I was laying there, and I wrestled with it. And I can remember going about a day and just wrestling, thinking, God, haven't you seen the things that I've gone through? And you're asking me to have joy even in these moments. And finally, I can remember taking my tummy and pressing on it and kneeling down on the floor, just in complete surrender and saying, God, I choose joy because I know that you are walking with me through this. And it almost felt like at that point forward, the days just disappeared day after day after day. Mm. And 
So I look at life very differently now. Yeah. I'm looking at life thinking, God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this breeze outside. Thank you for breath and for life and the reassurance that you are faithful enough to carry us through even our hardest moments. And so I see God in a whole new way yeah. after coming through a lot of health things. And it makes me think when life doesn't go the way that we plan, because we all have our, our image of what we want um, through life. When life doesn't go as we plan, how do we deal with that? How do we, do we fight God with it? Do we wrestle with it? No, this isn't the way it's supposed to go. I had the occasional moment where I'm thinking, God, this wasn't the plan. I can't sing right now. You know that I was meant to do that. I can't hardly speak. I, I was meant to be in ministry. I can't be laying here. There's time wasting. And yet that whole thing, I just felt him saying, just rest rest because when you accept that even though things aren't going the way that you want them to there is peace in that there's peace in resting in in god even through the hard stuff that's part of a ministry his ministry to us mm -hmm. you know yes yeah and it's um it's good to be on the mountain yes but nobody wants this, uh, the valley, but it's in that valley that we know God. Yes. And he becomes real in our lives. Yes. I actually, when I think back to the times of laying on the couch and how much time I had to spend just praying and singing songs in my head, I, it hurt too much to actually sing, but to actually be thinking through the words of the song, it is well with my soul. Uh, songs about peace, songs about God being our comforter, the promises that God's given in his word. Um, it, it just is something that it stations you. It makes you have a foundation that can't be uprooted, you know, and that's powerful. It's been very powerful in my life. He's good on the mountain. He's good in the valley low, he's good in times of trouble, that's why I love him so. He's good while I'm sleeping, he's good when I'm on my knees, he's good though I'm unworthy, yeah, he is good to me. I don't worry when the skies are gray, and I don't bother with the dark Satan throws my way. For the one who cares for sparrows and the lilies of the field is the one who calls the violent storms when he says, peace be still. He's good on the mountain. He's good in the valley low. He's good in times of trouble. That's why I love him so. He's good while I'm sleeping. He's good when I'm on my knees. He's good though I'm unworthy. Yeah, he is good to me. So Corey, after you went through your operations and uh, God has helped you so much during that time, was your health good then afterwards? I think that coming through that part of the journey, I felt like that was the really hard stuff at that point. Um, but about a year after that, I all of a sudden was trying to give some announcements at work. And I felt like my breathing, someone had just squeezed my neck and cut off all my air supply. And so it started a whole string of tests that were done on me. They checked my heart, they checked the lungs, they checked everything possible, only to find that they couldn't find anything with my health. And uh, through a series of different things that took place, we realized that it was from the house that I was living in renting it had some really bad mold in the basement. Oh dear. And because of that, um, it, I'm so terribly allergic to dust and mold to begin with. But every time the furnace system came on, um, I was getting all the mold spores coming in. And so when the mold crew came, they completely took everything how out did, of- How did they find that? 
They had to go in in the suits. They, it was quite the thing. It's exactly okay. like what you see on movies. They had okay. the full suits. They went in and tested and um, and just just totally had to do special treatments on the basement. And they took everything that I own from there and ended up burning it and just getting rid of it. So that was quite an interesting journey there. That's pretty devastating, especially <laughs> after what you just came through. I, I will have to say that I didn't fully understand um, God's plan at that point, only because it did feel like a hard journey with health up to that point. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden to not be able to breathe and I ended up in a wheelchair for almost eight months because when I would try to walk, it felt like I was gonna pass out. And so I never actually did pass out, but it definitely gave that feeling of, of gasping for air. And so I couldn't speak. I, my family knows that I'd be texting them even if they were sitting right there. Um, it damaged your lungs? I'm not sure. I have not had tests to, to confirm one way or the other. All I do know is that I'm talking today. I want to say it's, it's God's healing. Um, <laughs> and I just keep trusting in that more. Um, the fact that I'm able to walk and talk and and I'm singing again, and that's just an exciting thing for me because I know where I came from with health, and so I'm, I'm glad to come through that as well. Yeah. And how did God speak to you through that? I think through that time, um, it was different than when I went through the health time with, with my stomach and all of the things going on. This time, I couldn't even speak and make my thoughts known so I actually, when I think about it, I started writing things down. And through that, it made me realize that I love to write. And so that's how the book idea that I was working on, now that I think about it, it came into being. And so, yeah. Writing is such a gift. Mm. It is such a gift. I enjoy it. Yes. Yeah. 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 So in that regard, how are you today? Today, I still have some strange, quirky things um, that I just deal with on a daily basis. Um, if I overheat, it still feels like the mold is not my friend in my body. And so there's some continuing things that I'm just praying about. But what I do know is that regardless of those things, I'm still able to be here on a TV show today. And to me, that's an absolute miracle. The fact that I'm alive, the fact that God carried me through is an absolute miracle. How so. did he carry you through? How did he reveal himself to you through that process? I think that through that time, I feel like I, I started to just get such an overwhelming sense of his presence being there. Um, when you get busy in your everyday life and you're running from one thing to the next, it's harder to have that much focus time. So I all of a sudden was stripped from being able to walk because of my stomach. And so I experienced that. Um, I sat and watched seasons go by out a window. Um, it reminded me that there are many people going through even worse than what I experienced. And I just really want people to realize the strength that comes from knowing God in those times. See, that's what separates yeah. us, right? Right. The yeah. world, they panic when there's things like that. Yeah. They have no compass. They have nothing to keep them focused. But with us, we can look at that and say, God is my compass. God is the one that I can continually come back to. And I can learn more about being close to him every day. And he carries us through those things, too. He becomes our center. He does, definitely. So I am so thankful for that. Yeah. So from there, how did God lead you? I think that every day, whether we've been through valleys or not, it's a choice to serve God. And it's a choice to see the good in life. And it's a choice to have joy. It's a choice to rest in peace. And so 
I can't actually look at it and say, that's something I went through. It's not a part of me today because I still am dealing with some of the repercussions with my health. But what I can look at is say, today, God is with me in the same way that he was with me there. It, it didn't change. And if anything, it's made me want to know him more. <laughs> it's made me realize the impact of prayer um, in my own personal life. And it's made me just feel very thankful, very, very thankful for life and the things we take for granted, right? Yeah. In, in that valley, Corey, what did you learn about God? Like, who is he? I think through that time, um, I think I've always known who God is. And I think my expectations of him changed, <laughs> if anything. And I'll explain that a little bit. You can go through all the church quotes. You can travel with your family singing on a bus. You can face a lot of hardships or good times in life. But until you go through something like that, all of a sudden, because you know God's goodness through those right. things, it's easy to say God was in that because it was all good. You know, the things that are happy in life. But when you go through the hard things and then come through it, now my expectation of who God is and what he wants for my life, I'm anticipating the more. I'm, uh, you know, I see the dot, dot, dot. I want to know what's next because I don't feel like it's the end of that story. You know, it's a work in progress and it's, and it's God revealing himself through time. Does he become more personal and more intimate during the hard times? Definitely. I think not because he has changed, but because our openness and willingness to hear his voice, to just want to be present with him, that's our anchor. And so we hang on in a different way sometimes than we do through the good times. So it does change a bit. Yeah. So how is your walk with the Lord now? I'm at a place of just feeling excited to think of what God might have in the future. Um, I've seen what I've come through and the last six years, again, are probably some of the hardest I've personally faced myself. And, and yet I want to know what God sees. I, I, want, I want to help people understand this is who God is and he's big enough to hold you through the good and the bad times. Yeah. And he's present. I think that's a misconception nowadays is that God is some big God off in the sky. But God is so present, whether we're going through the hard times, whether we're in the valleys, whether we're on the mountaintops, he's rejoicing with us on the mountaintops. Right. But he's carrying us in those valleys. And I understand those words more than I ever have in my life. Yeah. yeah. And so are you doing any ministry right now? I think ministry is a choice. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's, a, it's in a different format right now than I've known growing up because okay. growing up we traveled full time as a family singing and touring across Canada and the States, which um, I'm not doing that at this moment. However, mm -hmm. music, is the root and the heart of how I've grown up. And so I am definitely involved in worship leading at church, doing some uh, recordings, writing songs. If God lays something on my heart, I've got to get it into a song. And so that's something that, that's just been a joy. I've really enjoyed that, yeah. And uh, talking to you earlier, writing has been a part of your life? Yes, it has been, yeah. It was interesting because my mom's dad was a writer and my mom has always enjoyed writing through the years. And it was something that 
when I was growing up, I just saw it as schoolwork. And so I kind of set it aside. But then I got thinking of all the different stories uh, through the years of growing up in ministry, some things that have happened to me personally. And if anybody knows me, they know that I just love to laugh. Yes. And I thought, this day and age more than ever, we need to laugh. Yes. And so I'm taking some of those stories and collecting them and putting them into a book, hopefully, as God gives the words and uh, more of a, a devotional type thing, because I think there needs to be humor, but there also needs to be a reason for that humor. And so I always want to have some kind of an application at the end of each article. So what has, what has the Word of God meant to you? Hmm. I think that there's so many verses that are filled with strength and uh, hope and so much uh, clarity. You can read a scripture verse and go, wow, that's exactly what I needed in that moment for my life. And a verse that I feel that way with, I think it's many people have the same verse that they like, but I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And that's a verse that as I was going through all of my health things, as I face things in life, just to come back to that promise of plans of a hope and a future, the reminder that God has us. He has us in his grip and we don't have to question that. We don't have to, to, to search hard for that. It's there, it's in his word. He spo is spoken and we can rest on that. Thank you very much, Corey, for sharing your, your heartaches and your joys and your walk with God. It's mm, been a blessing to welcome. me and I thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Storms will rage, but I don't wonder if you see me on these waves, cause you've come by and said, be still, and what you've done be to breathe.